All right, time for the math easy solution. We're gonna discuss some water mechanics and look at buoyancy and uh, basically Archimedes principle. It's really useful in all of water mechanics. Use a lot, and basically Archimedes, uh, he was a pretty uh, brilliant inventor back in the year 200 BC, like around that time before that. And um, yeah, so he came up with this uh, principle. So basically, let's say if you have a fluid here, and then and then uh, basically you have an object inside it. It's just a r random object. Basically, the force acting on it is is the, the self weight, and then he came up with a he he proposed that they have every every object has a buoyant force acting on it. Yeah, buoyant force equal to the weight of the displaced uh, fluid. So basically, uh, the displaced fluid is, let's say if you put an object in, you're pushing away water, e the amount of water equal to the volume of this. And then basically the force of, the, and then that's the force of pushing up is the weight of it. And uh, so if you look at, let's say, a floating object here, the buoyant force would just be, you would only take into account this volume, the one that's displaced by water or inside the water. So you only look at that buoyant force. And uh, here's a proof of it. So basically, if you were here, so I'll just write proof of this. It's pretty, pretty useful theorem. Yeah, and you could also you could you could uh, just see see this buoyant force for yourself. If you put an object in water, um, yeah, you you see that it's it is actually lighter in water. Even when you go swimming, you're floating because there's a force pushing you up. And then yeah, so this it's equal to the weight of of the volume displaced of the fluid. So if you look at let's say Here's how you could prove it. Let's draw a fluid. This is just a little water mark, or just a fluid mark. So basically, if you have an object in here, we'll draw a a rectangular cube or whatnot. It, this is a, this is 3D, but uh, I'm just drawing it in 2D. It actually has, let's say, let's say it has sides like this. It's just easier to draw, and so it's like this, and then it has a cross-sectional area. That's equal the same on top and bottom, and then it is a height h and whatnot. So basically, if we, if we were to draw all the forces or the pressure on this, so when you put stuff in here, you have pressure all around it from the fluid. You have pressure all around on every side, and then you have a greater pressure at the bottom than you do at the the top. This is why there's a greater force. As this is why it's pushing it up. So you you would have something like this. Then this is top. Let's call this uh, pressure. Pressure um, top. This is pressure horizontal. It's pressure horizontal. So the horizontal, you can see it's the same. You also you have a, the weight of it, the weight of this object. And then this is pressure bottom. And so pressure is basically defined as force over area, the cross-sectional area. So in, in this case, if we were to draw the forces, you would draw, this is this would be, let's go FH, and then this is an equal one because it's just directly the other side, FH, and they cancel. So basically, so you have this force, then you also have this one right here. This one would be FT, and this one would be FB. Yeah, so this is for the force at the bottom and force at the top. So it now the force, for each of these, these corresponding ones, this one would be, FB would just equal to, well, if you just rearrange how this is, this is PB times it by the area cross-sectional area. And then the P top is equal to, I'll we'll call this. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, the force here would equal to the pressure at the top times a, yeah, a cross-sectional area there. So the pressure, um, I'll show this in another video, it's uh, linearly, um, yeah, so pressure is in static conditions, in static conditions in, in a fluid, in a fluid is linear. It, it's linear in, um, yeah, in linear in terms of depth. So it, so basically if this flow, you'll have something like this, the pressure profile would be something like this. It would go like this. So it would get bigger and bigger. So it would go like 
linear like this. I'll show us another video why it's like this. And this is basically, if this is height z going down like this, and it's linear, yeah, and this this is what this would be. Let's say pressure. So it's linear. So we need to know the this depth here. We'll call this z. So then add add z, and we'll call this here. We'll call this z plus h because it's just a height here. That would be z plus h. And so if we were to sum up the forces, well, if you do some of the forces in horizontal side, I'll show you force equilibrium and how it's used in another video. But yeah, basically, uh, this, so if we were to horizontally sum of the forces, well, we'll just have FH minus FH equals zero. Because uh, if we consider right side positive. And yeah, they just canceled. This, this doesn't, we don't get anywhere from here. But if we look at the uh, vertical, or let's say vertical, so f some of the forces in the up and down direction, we'll consider, you know, let, let's consider down as, um, actually, uh, let's go consider up as positive. If it goes up as positive, we'll have, so we'll basically, we'll have this FB force. So we'll have this FB minus, and so we'll have FB minus FT minus weight this has to equal zero. When it equals zero, this means it's not moving. It means static conditions. Okay, so now that we've drawn this out, this is actually what the buoyant force is. This is the buoyant force. And we'll call this B. So basically what it's saying is that if you put a object with the weight W inside, you'll have this force pushing it up. So you'll have B minus W yeah, it has it equals zero. It means it's not moving. So that's what we would do. And then this, if we look at the, this is in static conditions. So basically, if we were to look at this one here, B is equal to F B minus F T. And then this one, the F B, like I wrote before, is basically pressure at the bottom, P B times by a cross sectional area, minus this one is pressure at the top times yeah a times uh, yeah a cross sectional area to the top and they're the same in this case and so basically here pressure pb or uh, pt we'll go look at pressure top this one is equal to well like i said pressure is linear based on yeah it it's linearly it's a linear profile based on uh, depth and it, this actually equals to um, we'll call this unit weight of the fluid times by the depth Z. So this is what it is and where unit weight is equal to force over volume and this is just equal to M times G over volume and density rho density is equal to M over V. So basically yeah, uh, the unit weight is just equal to yeah, rho density We'll just call this density of the fluid times g. So right now we'll have. So what? So what we have here is so unit weight times z is pt, and and then pb, the depth is it's going to be unit weight of the fluid times by now z plus h because we we went down h. So if we put this inside, we'll get uh, b is equal to. Yeah, b is equal to uh, what is this? Pb. So pb minus PT if we make the A by itself because it's the same then we'll have Sigma I mean uh, this unit weight epsilon times it by Z plus H and then this one subtracted by unit weight of F times Z let's write this and this is a prime a, a cross section now if you simplify this we could get the, the common the common stuff out so we'll get a times unit weight of fluid times z plus h minus z so there is what we get here so we'll get a cross section earlier times unit weight and then this z's cancel this cancels and we're left with h so there it is. If you look at what this means, so basically we'll get 
this is the buoyant force that is equal to a cross section area if you have this fluid here whatever it looks something like that so you have a cross sectional area here times by h so a times h is equal to volume and then unit weight is equal to force over volume so then times it together so you'll have this cancels you're just left with the force so this force is equal to the displaced weight of it so there it is that's the proof of it so if we were to look at uh, an example here let's say Okay, so let's look at an example. Um, let's say if we have a, say, a rectangular uh, boat or whatnot, <laughs> or is a, just a rectangular box where someone's sitting in here. Let's draw this. This is a pretty bad drawing, but let's just say it's um, a rectangle here. Yeah, so yeah, let's say you have a rectangular boat with dimensions, let's say it's one meter high, and then this is, let's call this three meters uh, long. And basically, let's say you're standing in here and this guy is sitting in here and he weighs, let's say, 70 kg. And let's call this, uh, let's say it weighs 330 kilograms. And uh, just say, uh, just so it becomes a nice, so they add up to 400, it's a nice number. So basically, uh, now let's say if we want to know what what is the height that it would float. If we were to put it in water... Yeah, so let's say yeah, if we put in water, what depth h or will it go down? So let's call this h. And now boats are uh, they float well because it's is they're lightweight because they're hollow inside, and then they displace a lot of water. So if we were to look at what we just uh, discussed on Archimedes' principle, if we were to let's uh, we assume it's going to float. So yeah, let's say it's, it's it assumes going to flow. Let's say this is h. So then. It, let's say it floats and this is the height here and this is h so we want to know what h is so h equals what so this is h and this yeah we don't know what it is but then we know this uh, the dimensions of this there's the guy sitting in here if we just draw it horizontal so now if we look at the free body diagram uh, basically we know the forces here is going to be the weight of the combined and then we'll have this buoyant force that's acting on it so then this yeah so we have and then it, if assuming it is floating we're just going to set this equal to each other so then basically some of the forces in some of the forces of y equals zero if they're not moving it means it's floating we'll go w oh, let's go minus b equals zero or th this case w equals b and w is equal to just the this one's equal to mass, of the, let's say the person, plus m boat, then times by 9.8. We'll call this water, let's say this is water. Water, and then water has a, yeah, let's say water has a unit weight. Yeah, water in, in, in at regular water at like 4 degrees Celsius or whatnot has unit weight of 9.8 kilonewtons over meters cubed and this is acceleration due to gravity basically force uh, yeah, W is equal it's a force and this is just M times acceleration to gravity or G so 9.81 meters per second squared we'll use um, metric units and then this one would be yeah so M this is the 70 kg plus 330 kg times 9.81 meters per second squared. So if we put this in a calculator, let's just calculate this 70 plus 330, which is 400, 9.81. This equals to, yeah, 3924. And this is in units of, is this going to be force. So this could be in newtons. So 3.94, so this equals 3, point, let's go 3.924 newtons, it's not a decimal. And yeah, so basically this equals to 3.924 kilonewtons. Just to make it easier. So then, so basically we know the weight, so now we know that the buoyant force is equal to 3.924 kilonewtons. And then as we saw before, it's the weight of the displaced uh, water so or fluid so in this case 
we're going to go gamma w times by the dis displayed depth, which we don't know, then times by the area, area cross-sectional area. And in this case, uh, a cross-sectional area is just equal to, well, 1 times 3. And this is equal to, yeah, 3 meters squared. So if we put all this in the calculator, we'll get, yeah, so if we rearrange for h, we'll get h equals to, well, b divided by gamma w times a this. And this is just 3.9. So it equals this, and uh, yeah, these, these cancel, and then the kilonewtons. Yeah, so yeah, we'll have this as a cube, so then th this cancel, we're left with 1m, and the kilonewtons cancel, and we'll, we'll be, be left with uh, meters. So we'll get h in meters, put in the calculator. So if we put in a calculator here, we'll just go, let's call this, let's go 3.924 divided by well, 9.81 times 3. Yeah, this, then, then this equals to, yeah, 1.333 or 0 0.13333. 3, 3. If we round this up and make it into, let's say, something like centimeters, we'll get 133, just round it, uh, centimeters. So as you can see uh, with boats, uh, so it was a, let's see, so if we have one meter here, it, it only goes down, yeah, this would be 133 centimeters. So basically most of this is, you're free here. So you're not gonna, f you're not gonna sink or whatnot. So basically, yeah, that's, with boats it's hollow inside so then it displaces a lot of water because it's and it weighs light so it, then you have buoyant force pushing it up well, that's a small example of how you could use it to calculate how how much your boat if you're designing one will sink or whatnot well thanks for watching and um, that's our committee's principle the long one well hopefully you learned and i'll teach um, how to get this later this one's pretty complex well thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.